Hello dear students, welcome back to my channel Hilo Pharmacology. So in continuation with the immunosuppressive agents, in this session let us learn about the biological agents which can act as an immunosuppressant drugs. So under biological agents you have got tumor necrosis alpha inhibitors, example is etanercept, infleximab and adalimumab. Under interleukin 1 receptor antagonist, you have got anakindra. Under interleukin 2 receptor antagonist, you have got basileximab and daclizumab. Under anti CD3 antibody, you have got muromonab CD3. Under polyclonal antibodies, you have got anti thymocyte antibody and rhodi immune globulin. So let us take one by one. So, whenever the macrophages are activated, so these macrophages will release the tumor necrosis factor alpha. This release tumor necrosis factor will going to combine with the tumor necrosis factor receptor 1 as well as receptor 2, which are located on the surface of the neutrophils, fibroblast and endothelial cells. Following the activation, these neutrophils fibroblast and endothelial cells will mediate the immune inflammation. Along with that, even the cytokines will also help in immune-mediated inflammatory reactions. So this tumor necrosis factor which is causing the immune inflammation can be inhibited by drugs like tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors. Examples are etanercept which will going to inhibit both tumor necrosis factor alpha and beta and infleximab is little bit selective in action which will going to inhibit only TNF alpha activity and adalimumab will going to inhibit the TNF alpha activity and adalimumab is less antigenic in nature and infleximab is chimeric monoclonal antibody. So these three drugs will going to inhibit the TNF activity. So this biological agents are mainly used that is tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors can be used as a supplementary drugs in the treatment of refractory autoimmune diseases as well as it can be used as a reserve drugs in the treatment of graft versus host rejection reactions. So these are the uses of tumor necrosis alpha inhibitors. It can be used in case of refractory or resistance cases of rheumatoid arthritis. In case of the severe or resistant or refractory ankylosing spondylitis, polyarticular idiopathic juvenile arthritis, plague psoriasis, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis that is inflammatory bowel diseases. So next you have a interleukin 1 receptor antagonist that is anakindra. They are useful in the treatment of resistant rheumatoid arthritis. So along with that they can also be used in the treatment of transplant rejection reactions. So on the other, on the other end you have got interleukin 2 receptor antagonist. Example is daclizumab and basileximab. So the plasma of life of daclizumab is 3 weeks whereas basileximab is 1 week. So basically two of these drugs will going to inhibit the interleukin binding to the CD25 receptor which is located on the surface of the T cells. So one thing you should remember whenever you are using the interleukin 2 receptor antagonist is so these interleukin 1 as well as interleukin 2 receptor antagonist will cause anaphylactic reactions, will increase the opportunistic infection rate and also peripheral edema. So next coming to the one more important biological agent that is Muromonab CD3. This Muromonab CD3 will going to inhibit the activity of CD3 means it will going to inhibit the activation of CD3 receptor located on the surface of the helper T cells. So basically they are used during acute transplant rejection reaction, during steroid resistant cases and also during bone marrow transplantation. Only worry about Muromonab CD3 is it will going to cause cytokine release syndrome. Cytokine 
release syndrome. Next we have got the anti-thymocyte globulin that is ATG. So this anti-thymocyte globulin will be obtained following the administration of immune thymic lymphocyte into the horse or rabbit. From the horse as well as rabbit they will be collecting the blood and it will be purified to get the anti-thymocyte globulin. This anti-thymocyte globulin will going to bind with the T lymphocyte and following that it will going to deplete the T lymphocyte activity. So these are very useful during acute transplant ejection reactions as well as steroid resistant cases. So only worrisome about anti-thymocyte globulin is it will going to cause serum sickness and anaphylaxis. Next we have a RH incompatibility. So if the fetus has got rho D positive and mother is rho D negative, in, in such circumstances what will happen is there will be antibody production against the rho D positive in the maternal blood. This antibody produced will going to cause hemolytic disease of newborn. So this can be avoided by giving anti-D or anti-Rho immune globulin. This should be administered 70, within 72 hours following the delivery or abortion so that you can prevent the hemolytic disease of newborn in the subsequent offsprings. And it can also be given during pregnancy at 28th week so that you can prevent the risk of hemolytic disease of newborn during delivery. So there are three types of regimens you need to understand. So there are induction regimen, maintenance regimen and anti-rejection regimen. So under induction regimen, so you need to give preoperatively, you need to start with the immunosuppressive agent and it can be continued up to 2 to 12 weeks post op period. So co most commonly used triple therapy is the, you can use the calcineurin inhibitors like cyclosporin, tacrolimus and mTOR inhibitor that is sirolimus along with that you can be giving glucocorticoids that is prednisolone plus mycophenolate morphotel and azathioprine. Since these combination should be avoided in case of nephrotoxic prone individuals because this cyclosporin and tacrolimus are known to cause nephrotoxicity. In such scenarios you need to replace it with the sirolimus plus prednisolone and mycophenolate morphotel combination which is divided of nephrotoxicity. So during the maintenance regimen you can continue with the same drug which were given during induction regimen but it should be given for lifelong or prolonged duration of time and the dose will be very low. And other regimen is the anti-rejection regimen where you will be giving the steroid pulse therapy. Example is methyl prednisolone. If the patient is not tolerating the steroid pulse therapy or not responding to the steroid pulse therapy, you may need to check for alternative therapy like muromonab CD3 as well as anti-thymocyte globulin and also you can go for tacrolimus or serolimus or mycophenolate morphetil. So this was regarding the class on biological agent, we have studied about the anakindra, we have studied about the interleukin 2 receptor antagonist, we have studied about the tumor necrosis fa factor alpha inhibitors and anti-thymocyte globulin and the anti rho immune globulin and also the three types of regimens which are more commonly used to prevent the graft rejection as well as rejection during organ transplantation. Thank you. If you find this video useful, please do subscribe to my channel Hilo Pharmacology and do not forget to share and hit the like button for more updates on pharmacology. Thank you.